drop-ins, we have them on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And um, Tuesdays are Tuesdays and Thursdays are in person and th Wednesdays are virtual. You see, I'm still trying to learn the schedule as well. Um, and so as you see here on the screen, um, you can join our Microsoft Teams channel um, the same way that you join for the workshops. We do have a drop in. And so feel free, you can join um, either one of those to be able to be seen for a drop in appointment. If you're unfamiliar with what a drop in appointment is, that is pretty much where you do not need an individual career counseling appointment. Um, you are just free to hop on for um, just a virtual 15 minute or 30 minute meeting with the career development specialist. Okay. And then feel free to take a picture of the screen. Um, these are our upcoming uh, spring 2024 career fairs. And so you are right on time because we will be having, we just finished, unfortunately, our prepare for the fair week. We're going to be going into our STEM careers week, February the 19th through the 23rd, followed by our STEM career fair that will end that week, which is February the 22nd. Um, and then we will have our communications and marketing mixer. We have a graduate and professional student appreciation week. Um, so you see the lineup here okay and so the beautiful thing about that is that our fairs are open to each of you that are on the call um i know some of you may say oh well um i plan on going to this fair today but they told me that i couldn't come because i didn't identify as that major well that is not the case here um we would love to see you at our career fairs where we actually would love to service all students all majors and so this is here for your um your advantage Okay, moving right along, um, the STEM Careers Week, if you'd like to take a picture of this, this is a wonderful lineup that we're going to have starting on Monday, February the 19th. Um, we're going to do a path to proficiency resume workshop on Tuesday, followed by a STEM alumni panel on uh, Wednesday, elevating your pitch. And then, as I mentioned, Thursday, we'll end it off with the STEM Career Fair. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Even as you prepare for this week and you need a suit, feel free to utilize our career closet. Okay, and then finally, I know we have some cool things going on, but just want to let you all know to put this in your toolkit. This is our spring 2024 workshop lineup. Um, so feel free. Um, next week we're going to be doing Are You in Love with Your Interviewing Skills? So it'll be on Valentine's Day, kind of going along with the theme. Um, and then we'll have a workshop every week. OK, until April the 24th, which join us back same time next week at this same channel. OK. So let's hop into it. OK, let's let's get to why we're here in terms of resume and just what can you do to strengthen it? Right. And so here are going to be some general tips. And so your resume should be tailored for the specific job description. And your overall goal is going to be to highlight your most relevant experiences. And so throughout the duration of this presentation, you will hear me say recent and relevant. And so in our career services world, we like to say the two R's. OK, and then we even like to say the two C's, which is clean and concise. But as it relates to this particular slide, we want your resume to be um, tailored right to the most specific job description. But we want you to focus on having recent and relevant experiences. OK, and it should be one page and it should be presentable. Um, a lot of times I do get questions about the font and I honestly am just going to be very honest with you all and say, you know, keep it simple, keep it clean, keep it concise. Um, and so maybe using a font that's like, um, you know, of course, Times New Roman, you can't go wrong with that. Maybe Arial, right? But you don't want to get too crazy um, with your font. So you want to choose an appealing font and then also you want to use bullet points that are going to be easy to read. Okay. It should also be action oriented. OK, you should start with strong action words, meaning you should use words if you are if it's present tense, meaning you're currently at this job. You want to actually use the correct tense and really showcase the action um, and, of course, be relevant in terms of what you're speaking. And so you want to use words like executed, composed, modified. Um, and so we're going to make sense of this as we navigate through the presentation. But you want to make sure that you also have relevant sections um, and it's should have at least three to five bullet points filled with accomplishments right and then also are you quantifying these accomplishments and so we'll talk about that as well but you also want to avoid listening or listing general duties and responsibilities okay and then how did you stand out from your peers in similar roles and so you really want to sell yourself and you really want to be specific as you are 
creating your resume, but most importantly, as you're talking about yourself, as you are highlighting your accomplishments, as you're highlighting your experiences. And so how do you do that? Okay, and the first thing is you're going to showcase your skills. And so what are your job specific skills? And so I honestly can tell you that we don't necessarily encourage you to steer away from putting soft skills on your resume. But as it relates to your industry, you really want to go far. You really want to go for the technical and the hard skills. And so as you see here, um, you want to really ask yourself, what are your job specific skills? And so this will then encourage you to go and do that research in the industry to really see the specialized or the technical skills that are required for your position or your industry. OK, and then and once again, as you think about these hard skills, what are the soft skills? I'm not saying that you should not put them, but I would just encourage you to refrain from including them um, and really focus in on the hard or the technical skills. OK, but transferable skills or soft skills, um, these are skills that are going to be related to your personality. So a lot of times on resumes, you will see um, communication, teamwork, all these skills. Right. But we all communicate. So we kind of say like those are soft skills. Um, and so, of course, transferable skills can be um, seen as being skills related to your ability to be a good worker. So like I said, communication, teamwork, all those skills that we all know um, are notable. But then these also can be skills that are transferred or used in a variety of jobs. And so, for example, this could be that maybe you are wanting to be a teacher and then you want to transfer and go be a physical therapist, right? Well, we kind of have to sit and talk about what are the soft and the hard skills that either will transfer and will not transfer. OK, so being able to showcase your skills is one of those other things that are important. OK, and so. As it relates to skill set, um, I don't know if you all have heard of NACE, which is the national the National Association for Colleges and Employers. Um, I don't know if you all are familiar with this, but based on them, they asked employers participating in this Job Outlook 2019 survey which skills and qualities beyond a strong GPA they most wanted to see on students' resumes, and. It's so I'm going to speak to this, but then I'm going to speak to a study that was recently conducted um, with NACE. And as it relates to this, though, they're saying that communication skills, they want them to be shown and be written. Um, problem solving skills, ability to work in a team, um, initiative, analytical, quantitative skills, strong work ethic, communication skills, so verbal, and then leadership. And so if you were to go on the NACE website, they have what they call competencies. And these competencies are pretty much here to say, as professionals, all right, that are working in colleges, this is what we would like for you to kind of be preparing your students to have the skill set to be out and go be working professionals. Um, but on the flip side of that, or it was a recent study that was conducted by NACE, and they surveyed not just recent graduates, but they also surveyed recent like relevant employers. And one of the questions that they asked them or the data in terms of what they showed was that um, the top skill that employers and recruiters are, that are they're now looking for is technology. And I thought that that was kind of weird because it was like, OK, what about communication? What about problem solving? What about leadership? You mean to tell me that as recent graduates, employers want to see the technical or tech savvy skill. So I think that that's a wake up call that we all kind of need to sit down and say, hmm, OK, maybe we need to e reevaluate our practice so that we're making sure that we're preparing you. OK, so here's a sample and we're going to break this sample apart. Um, if you are familiar with our office and our services, this is our standard resume sample that if you were to come in for an individual career counseling appointment, we would offer this resource to you to help you and guide you with strengthening your resume. And so as it relates to this particular sample that you see, um, this is pretty much what we call an outline. And this outline will literally talk you through each of the components to say, hey, this is maybe what you should say. This is what you should include or this is the importance of this line or this bullet. OK, and so this sample, I will show you all how and where you can find that on our website, um, but just wanted to show you all that. OK, so as we break this apart and we're going to start with the contact info. And so what you should do is list your name at the top. OK, as you saw here, it's a big, bold statement. Who are you? 
Okay, and that is kind of like your headline. And so you're going to list your name at the top. You're going to list where you currently reside. Um, so the city, state, and zip code. Um, I had a student that asked me, well, I'm from somewhere else. I said, well, where do you currently reside? And so these are questions that you want to ask yourself. Okay, where do I currently live? And so your city, state, and zip code should be where you currently reside. Um, still being the same with your professional email address and phone number should still be current, should be a working email, should be a working phone number. Um, we do get questions that will say, well, do I put my student email? Do I put my personal email? And so one of the things you want to keep in mind is that when you do graduate, yes, you'll have an alumni email, but what is going to be that email that you know for a fact is going to be like that contact that you will be able to get in contact to. Um, your phone number, want to make sure it's a working phone number, making sure that your voicemail box is either cleaned out so that if you do get a call, they um, don't get your voicemail and say, oh, we're unable to leave a voicemail. So you do want to make sure that your voicemail box capacity um, is either cleaned out or just kind of make sure it's up to date. You don't want to include your age, your marital status, your health, or adding a photo. Um, and I honestly want to pause here because Based on your major, there are certain things that you will need to include on your resume as it relates to your industry. OK, and I will use this as an example. I mean, I do see my colleague on the call, so feel free to chime in. So I teach a liberal arts career planning course here as well um, with my colleague, Professor Bina. And so we get students that are in the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. And you know what the key word that I just said is arts and as it relates to your industry, you will probably need to include some information that is relevant to the industry. And so what I mean by that is that, for example, I had a student that wanted to be an actor as well as a director. Two totally different things, but what she had to do was she goes, Dr. Hayes, you're telling me to put the contact info on there, but a part of my contact info is also letting the recruiters know my eye color, my hair color, my height and my weight and all of these other different elements that we're missing. So what I'm going to say to you is that we're coming from a general perspective here, but I, I want you all to really take what I'm saying and internalize it as it relates to your industry, because we all know that each industry is different. Um, so if your industry is saying that they want to see your eye color, <laughs> They put that there. Um, if they are saying that they want to know, um, I don't know whatever in your headline, feel free to put that there. OK, but do not put your age, your marital status, your health, add a photo. Um, don't even put that you're seeking sponsorship. OK, don't put that um, I have a U.S. visa or, or just do not put that sensitive information um, on your resume. OK, and I do want to pause here and, and do we have any questions about contact info? OK, like I mentioned, this is a space. Feel free. You can ask questions as we go along. OK, your education as it relates to your education, you do want to put the university name, the location, your degree, your major, your graduation date or your expected graduation date. OK, as it relates to minors or your GPA, this is optional. OK, but once again, as it relates to your industry, if they are wanting you to include a GPA as a determining factor, then of course you're going to include that there. Now you're probably wondering, mm, my GPA is probably not that great. OK, if you are not confident in the GPA that you're going to put there, I would encourage you not to include it. Um, so like I said, these two elements are optional. All right. And so with your education, you are going to include it or you're going to place it in reverse chronological order, meaning the most recent on top. This is a common mistake that we all make where we think that, oh, let me just put it in order. Um, and so in the case of going on your resume, you're going to make sure that it is in reverse chronological order. And that does go the same. That's going to be the same for um academic projects. It's going to be the same for jobs, involvement, all of that. OK, but as it relates to your education, you will put the most recent on top and the old. Just think of it like a sandwich, like, <laughs> you know, you're making a sandwich, but you're smushing everything down, but you're putting the bread on top. And I don't know if that was a good example, but just think of it like that. Right. You're smushing everything down, but you're putting the bread on top to to, to make your sandwich. Um, 
And then as some things that you don't want to do is including your high school information. Um, I know that you're like, what? But yes, you're not going to include your high school information. Typically, after your first semester, first year of college, that information kind of falls off. Um, and then you don't want to include universities that you've attended but did not receive a degree. And so, for example, if you went and got an associate's degree and the degree was conferred, absolutely you're going to put that on there but if you went and you're like oh i just took some classes then absolutely not we're going to omit that information off of your resume okay also with um following along you have some relevant coursework and projects that you could potentially include as well and so you do want to com put completed projects or trainings relevant to the position Okay. You also want to put the full name of the course or the project. And then you also want to include details or accomplishments and outcomes for the projects. And so you're probably like, well, I've done a lot of group projects, but I haven't done any individual. And that's still OK, but you still want to include completed projects or trainings that are relevant to your position. Um, so if you're in a course right now and you're like, I'm doing a gr I'm doing a paper as it relates to some type of research with my industry absolutely you're going to include that on your resume okay but you're not going to include the abbreviated course name or the number and then you will not list your grade so if you took anatomy and physiology then you're going to put anatomy and physiology one and from there you're going to list all of the accomplishments or the details um, of the outcome of the project okay do we have any questions here Okay. Any questions about education? Any questions about the um, relevant coursework and project section? I just want to pause and make sure um, if we have any questions before moving on. Okay. All right. So your experience. You do want to put your employer name um you want to make sure that the location and the job titles are there you want to make sure that dates all of these things you want to put that okay you want to have about three to five action oriented bullet points which we're going to talk about how do you even write those or what do they even include but as it relates to action oriented bullet points you want to make sure that you have an action verb with a task and then the results of that OK, you will match accomplishments and duties to the objective in the job description. And we call this optimizing your resume OK, to fit the objective or fit the job description that you're applying. OK, and with that, it's just always good to have maybe a job description handy um, so that you know what the job is looking for. Right. And so you want to be specific. You're going to hear us say quantify a lot. And so you want to quantify your bullet points and emphasize the results of the keyword. So one of the things could be that maybe you're a customer service manager and maybe you say um, provide exceptional customer service support to 25 employees on a day to day basis. OK, you see how I threw in 25. That is how you quantify and emphasize the results. OK, and then you also are going to list experiences in reverse chronologically or reverse chronological order, and you're going to use the correct verbs. OK, but what you're not going to do is use full sentences. Um, you're not going to be brief. OK, and then you're not going to use the same bullet points or the same action verbs. Right. And so how do you write a descriptive bullet? OK, and so the first bullet that you see here just is very I was a I was a part time sales assistant or I work with customers talking and helping them. And so as it relates to the task and the action and all these different things, one of the things that you want to do is include the action verb, the task and the accomplishment. And as you see on the screen, um, if you have ever looked at our Cool Careers workbook, we do have a resource that are that is that is called, I'm sorry, Resume Action Verbs. And this will allow you to help or this will allow you to write that descriptive bullet. And so it is categorized by, you know, just kind of different skills. So like management, communication, research, technical, financial. And then from there, you're able to write out your descriptive bullet using this action verb. 
And so with an example, it could be assisted between. So let's just say these are the things that you've done, but you're like, OK, I still don't know how to write it. You could say assisted between 75 and 100 customers daily on sales floor resulting in employee of the month twice. OK, so you assisted between 75 and 100 customers. Of course, you will be awarded an employee of the month. OK, so that's the overall picture of including the verb, the task, the accomplishment. Resolve customer conflicts by offering coupons or alternative solutions to ensure customer satisfaction. OK, so once again, the verb, the task, the accomplishment. Right. So how do we make impactful bullets? Right. So here, as you see. Before, if we were to say responsible for raising funds, that's just very basic. OK, but we got to strengthen that bullet. And so some of the things that you can do is include industry specific buzzwords, action oriented language. And then, of course, are you quantifying the impact? So as it relates to the first one, responsible for raising funds, right? That's very basic. But if we were to make this impactful, we're going to go in and we're going to use words like formulated, which is that strong action verb. So formulated a campaign with six volunteers. Once again, we're quantifying um, to assist with tsunami relief, raising over eleven $1 hundred dollars by holding a date auction. OK, so not only are we using industry specific buzzwords, but we're using action oriented language and we're quantifying the impact. OK, let's look at another one. I made promotional materials. OK, that was before, but after created pro, uh, created promotional materials, utilizing Adobe Illustrator and wrote advertising content to reach out to 6000 students. Like once again, we're using industry specific buzzwords. Um, we're using our action oriented language as well as quantifying our impact. Are there any questions about this before we move on? OK, moving right along. All right, so skills. As it relates to the skills, you do want to make sure that you focus on the hard skills like I mentioned. So um, computer skills and languages, right? So some of the things that you can do, which like I said, we're going to I'm going to show you all examples here in just a second. We're just breaking the components apart. But one of the things that we like to say that you can do is categorize your skills. So, for example, if you want to showcase your language skills and you could put languages and then bilingual in, fluent in, proficient in, conversational, things like that. Um, you also want to make sure that you highlight skills relevant to the position or the industry. So, for example, and I'll show you guys an example in just a second, but you will see that in most cases, people will categorize their skills based on maybe computer, based on certifications, and just based on different things. And so feel free to do that. Um, but what you don't want to do is list soft skills and let that be it. Meaning you don't want to just say that your skills are teamwork, initiative, and communication. Um, and then you don't want to upsell yourself on languages. And so what that means is that you don't want to say that you're proficient in something when we are probably intermediate or basic. OK, so let's just try to keep it real with ourselves, dig deep to really understand who we are. Um, and then how do we relate to the skill set of the job? OK, so just keep these things in mind. All right, honors and activities. You do want to list honors, awards, and scholarships. You do want to include involvement in organizations, associations, or volunteering. Um, you do want to keep formatting consistent. All right, but what you don't want to do is discredit your experiences and accomplishments. Um, and I it took for someone to tell me that that you've earned it, so don't discredit it. OK, so you you don't skip involvement because you weren't a leader, although you were a member, you still want to put that there. Um, of course, you don't want to include high school information. Now, this is what gets tricky, even still for me. So Bina and Cynthia, feel free to chime in. But I've had questions from students that will say, well, I know that you said we're not supposed to put high school information on our resume, but I really want to keep this because, oh, my God. 
I, I started this organization that has now become whatever. So I really don't want to get rid of it. Um, and so if that is the case, then how do you approach that with the student? If they're like, I, I want to keep this. This is something I've done in high school. It's relatable to my industry. I don't want to take it off. Yeah. How do you how do you work with with a student in that situation? I'll chime in. I, I allow them to keep it. I allow them to keep okay. it and then you take it for a test drive and then you <laughs> see if it works. You know, do they call you yeah. back? Do you get the interview? Um, because there are some things employers have told me that students will do in their youth that they tell me do not tell them to take that off. And the one thing I sticks out was Eagle Scout. One employer said that is so important. You know, it takes so much work and effort and discipline to complete that. So that that's something they really looked upon. But also a lot of people are valedictorians and they never want to take that off. So if you're running out of room, though, and you need to stay on one page, what I suggest is you always put your LinkedIn profile at the top because when they click on that, you're going to put everything on your LinkedIn. So you can put your valedictorian every organization sport you were involved with so it doesn't get missed it's still there they just need to like dig a little deeper thank you and being i uh, saw that you were sharing too go ahead can't hear you okay no we can't hear you <laughs> i was gonna say you can maybe type in the chat if you want <clears throat> but no, I appreciate y'all for sharing. Um, and so feel free to put that in your toolkit. And so just by maybe a show of hands or just um, if you want to say in the chat, like I do, I do. How many of you are familiar with the applicant tracking system? Okay, feel free, raise your hand. Put in the chat, I am, I am, right? Um, and so if you're not familiar with this, the applicant tracking system is pretty much like I like to say this is the person that you want to beat. It's not a person, but I'm like, this is who you want to beat to get in front of the real person. So um, I like to use that like funny joke, but it's like, OK, what is it? It's a software that can scan your resume, um, filter by criteria and track candidates. It's used to find, um, use, find, screen, rank candidates for job openings. And so just to kind of give you all, a, put it into perspective and internalize it, um, let's just say you're applying to a company that has over 50 applicants for that one job. What's going to happen is they may not have time to read all those resumes. And so what they do is they have this system. They have algorithms that have been coded. They say, look, we want you to scan for computer science. We want you to scan for technology. We want we want the skills to match this. So what's happening is they are basically creating this algorithm to say, look, find people that match this and what we want. And so ultimately you upload your resume you apply for the job and they scan oh we're picking up on keywords bullet points all these things so everything we just talked about you want to make sure that you're optimizing those areas to be able to beat this system right here okay and so one of the things that i would encourage you to do right is to know keywords from your industry so if the keyword is Python, 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 then Python needs to be in your cover letter. It needs to be on your resume. Um, if C++ is what they want you to be proficient in, um, your skill set and everything needs to be from the perspective of you are an expert in C++. Um, and so you want to tailor your resume toward the job description. So if the job description is saying that they're looking for someone that's knowledgeable in data analyst best practices, I don't know, but you want to tailor your resume to where do we even have data analysts anywhere on our resume? Do we have the word data on our resume, right? So do we have Excel? Do we have all of these different programs that are going to optimize or be tailored to that job description? Okay, don't copy it word for word, but you want to make sure that it's tailored to that. OK, and so just to kind of let you all know about our resume assistance, because we're not available all the time. But if we if we're not available, we do have a pretty cool resource that in our absence, um, it is called VMock. And so it is a free resume review. Um, it is relevant in, in a targeted guidance. And so 
it gives you an instant resume scoring and benchmark. And so um, it is 24 seven. And so I think we do now have an optimizing feature to where you actually can go in and like select maybe the job or whatever and match your resume and upload it. So it's pretty cool. Um, I believe you get, uh, I believe you what, get 10 scans? Think you get 10 uploads or is it unlimited? It's unlimited? 10? It's 10. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get 10 uploads. Um, so just be intentional about that if you are needing additional assistance. Okay. And so as it relates, here, let me stop sharing. All right. So now what we're going to do is very quickly, I promise, very, very quickly. We are going to just, I'm going to just do this, breeze through this, and then we'll hop into what Cougar Pathway is, okay? And just give you guys a small demo, and then if you have questions, you are more than welcome to ask those, okay? So Cougar Pathway, what is it? Where do I log in? How do I use it? Why should I use it? And then, of course, I'm going to give you all a walkthrough, okay? So what is it? It's a portal for on and off campus job opportunities and career service. Is, okay, so you may see this. Let me go back because I just want y'all to see it. Okay, this is all things us. So if you see this logo on a flyer, if you see it on the screen, if you see it in your email, I don't know. If you log into Access UH and you see it, um, if you just see it, <laughs> this is us. Okay, um, this is the picture for our virtual career services channel. So just want to let you all know that Cougar Pathway is us. OK. And so overview, what is it, where, how, why? OK. And so, like I said, it is that portal for on and off campus job opportunities and career services. Um, I do want to let you know that this is a portal where you could potentially find internships as well. Um, So where do you go? Right. So being the fact that you are a currently enrolled student, you should see it in your Access UH. Um, so when you log into Access UH, you will see that Cougar Pathway icon and it will say University Career Services. And when you click that, it will take you to that and you will sign in or create your profile. OK, so how? I was going to show you all a snippet of a video, but um, I'm going to go back and give you all the I'm going to give you all a, a demo now of, of Cougar Pathway. OK, so. I'm going to log in. As a student. Hey, so we're here. Right. When you all log into Cougar Pathway, this is what you see. All right. This is what you see on your end. And let me zoom in for you all just to make it clear. OK, but when you all log in, this is what you see. Right. Your banner will say, you know, you will see upcoming events um, based on. And, and let me back up here. If you do not create a Cougar Pathway profile, you don't get a chance to have the cool perks. OK, which means you have to create a profile, do all of that to be able to see the jobs, apply for the jobs and all of that. So I encourage you, if you want to be able to access the cool features, create your profile. OK, and so when you do create your profile, um, you could come um, your profile will be up here. OK, you could do all of that. You can up create your resume, upload it, all of that. But you'll see the upcoming events, as you'll see here, then you'll see the upcoming workshop that's today and then all of the other events. And this is just on the home page. OK, people in your major. So based on how you create your profile, and what you say your major is, it will populate jobs that will say people in your major are interested in. And, and then let's just say you view a job. OK, well, because you viewed this technical writing intern at this company, we're going to bring up other jobs that are associated with it. OK, then we even have some announcements. So we want to let you know that career closet appointments are currently no longer available for the rest of the week. So we'll even post a, a cool announcements for you all as well. OK, so let's get into the gist of Cougar Pathway. Um, I know that you all are probably like, well, I need an on campus job. OK, well, this is where you can come to apply for on campus jobs. And so one of the things or ways that you can do to optimize your search is you can either do show me 
jobs that you qualify for or jobs matching your profile. But in this case, we are looking for on campus jobs. And this is where you need to know your status of either college work study or non college work study. And so if you are a college work study eligible, you can select that. And unfortunately, if you are not work study eligible, it will not show you the jobs that are here in the portal. Okay, I believe you have to be deemed as college work study eligible to see the college work study jobs. Okay, but as it relates to, oh, that didn't work out for me. Well, you can re redefine your search on campus non college work study jobs. And so I do want to say that you're probably wondering, well, what's the difference between the two? <laughs> the difference between the two is that college work study is federally funded through your financial aid, which means you're paid through your financial aid, whereas non-college work study, which is what we're looking at, will actually you will get paid as if it's a regular job through the department. OK, and so. You see here ECE student worker, electrical and computer engineering. They're wanting an on campus non college work study um, student. And then it says pays here, right? Compensation, desired skills, desired majors, right? Salary level as well. OK, so this is how you can search for those on campus jobs. Now you're probably like, hmm, what does this mean? So the nine, so let's just say you're like, I really want to apply for this job. I really, 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 really want to apply for this job, but he's saying I'm not qualified for it. And so one of the things that you can do is learn why. And it says your major is or not among those specified for this position. OK, so what major are they looking for? Well. I don't. I don't see the major executive and internal communications, but OK, so one of the things that I don't want you. OK, here. So it says minimum qualifications or experience, major requirements. They want you to be a class. I need to be. Bina, we need to tell our students about this <laughs> because they want class. Jack J. Valenti School of Communications or Journalism or any Bauer College of Business major interesting in journalism and communication. So um, this seems like a really great opportunity at the executive and internal communications level. Um, and so just want to let you all know that be very intentional about your search. Um, although it says that you might not be qualified, OK, I do encourage you to still. I mean, I don't even think you will be able to apply if you're qualified, like not qualified for the job. But I would encourage you to be intentional about maybe reaching out to someone. And they do have the employer's information. And she has her contact information. So be very intentional about reaching out to anyone that you see here to just get more information about it. OK, because just to give you all some insight, the employers, i.e. the on campus job people, <laughs> I'm just going to call them that. Um, they have to create Cougar, uh, Cougar Pathway profiles as well. And when they create the, their profiles to hire for the jobs, they go in and select the major, the skill, everything they're looking for. So on the back end of that, unfortunately, you all, we have nothing to do with that because that is up to the department and the hiring manager when they create their profile, when they create their job posts and all of that and what they select. So although Cougar Pathway is our portal, OK, we don't have anything to do with this job. Like this is not our job that we're hiring for. OK, but we can assist you if, if you need assistance. But unfortunately, we are not the hub for this job. OK, but I definitely wanted to make that clear. All right, so this is how you can find on campus jobs. Um, let's just say you're looking for an internship. Um, you can do on sites, right? You can maybe do on site internship pay. And then this is where all of the internship opportunities will pop up. OK, I do want to let you all know that Cougar Pathway is a is a generalized platform, meaning that we see all students, all majors. So every opportunity that is posted in Cougar Pathway has been vetted, meaning it's approved, it's it's legit. 
Um, but most importantly, it's open to all students. Um, unfortunately, like you all have like higher NSM, they have a portal that's through Simplicity as well that may genuinely be just natural science and mathematic jobs. Um, whereas ours, we're literally broad. So we have a ton of opportunities. Um, so there are entry level jobs. Yes, girl, Bridget, let me show you. So what you can do is do full time, no experience or degree required. Or in your case, you, you're being specific, entry level. So you could do full time entry level or recent grad. Once again, apply. And then it will then bring up all of these different opportunities that if you were to go and look at the qualifications or, you know, different things like that, you will see that the employer on the back end of this, they've said that the position that they're looking for is a full time entry level or a recent grad full time. They want you to have about two to five years of experience. OK, and then these are all of the the desired majors. Um, but once again, just be very intentional about your search. OK, does that answer your question? Perfect. Thank you. And so as it relates to other things that you can look at, like I say, you can come here, you can optimize your search. Um, and this is where you are actually able to find the wonderful opportunities that we have. OK, as it relates to our events and career fairs, um, I'm assuming you all have registered or, you know, click attend for this workshop. So, of course, you will. Come here, you will see the description of all of our events, workshops, et cetera, et cetera. So even here, if you wanted to attend this next week, you would click attend. OK, and it still gives you the description um, as it relates to. All right, let's get to the STEM career fair because I know you all may want to know about that. So the STEM career fair. Um, so any career fair that you would like to attend on behalf of University Career Services, this is where you will come to RSVP. OK, and the cool thing about this is you you can already see the employers that are coming. And so you will come to this fair, come to the employers and you can go ahead and already start your search to see who's coming. Um, and I would encourage you to go ahead. OK, and so that's something you can do. Some of these employers will post jobs. So like you see, they already have an intern posted for summer 2025. Um, so feel free, y'all hop on it. Okay, they already have some stuff posted um, as it relates to them promoting at the fair. OK, so feel free to hop on that. So going back to the events, um, any event that you see here, feel free to RSVP. Um, another event that we're having that I really want to encourage you all to attend. This is something new um, that was brought to our table that we're having an AI industry symposium and career mixer. Um, and so this is going to be like a, a good artificial intelligence symposium um, It's going to be sponsored by Chevron. So even if you wanted to come to that, you can go ahead and already RSVP. OK. And so as it relates to resources, we do have some additional resources here that can take you um, to certain places. As it relates to, like I mentioned, scheduling that individual career counseling appointment, this is where you will come to do that. And so how you will do that is you go to counseling, request a new appointment. Let's just say you wanted to come in for general questions. Um, you can select the date range. Let's just say you want to keep all of this the same. OK, um, and then from there. You will um, if you want to meet with the specific counselor, you can select them. I'm just going to select Bina and see if I can get in with Bina and then. Oh, I'm sorry. No appointment is found. OK, well, let me go to Cynthia and see. Oh, I'm sorry. No, but that's OK. OK, um, let's go. Oh, Toya has an appointment. So let me go check and see if Toya has an appointment. Ah. Toya has an appointment for Friday. So what do you do? You click that. Huh. OK, so this will come up. And from there, you will see all of the information. You have the option to choose between in person or virtual. Um, and so I know that our career development specialist, if you do want to meet in a virtual modality, um, you will get your appointment. Once it's approved, you'll get an email that will have the virtual meeting instructions. OK, but it will have all of your information here. 
Um, a lot of times students will leave notes and say, this is what I want to talk about. Oh my God, I had this going on. And da, 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 da. So feel free, okay? Let us know what's going on. And then from there, you will submit your request. It will then come to us for approval. And then from there, you will get your approval email saying that your appointment has been approved. Okay. Another thing that I definitely want to touch on is we do have a career closet service. Okay. And I just saw something in Cynthia and Bina. I don't think y'all caught this. So, for example, whatever service the students select, it brings up the counselor that has the availability for that service right here. So like you see, I'm selecting, and students, this goes for you too, I'm selecting career closet. Well, is populating the availability for the only person that is assigned to this service, which is Priyanka Routes. So if you all are interested in um, scheduling a career closet appointment, Okay, and I do want to pause here because students will schedule an appointment with for this service and thinking they're coming in for a resume review. Okay, it says here career closets for suit grad regalia rental only. Okay, I do just want to make this clear that I understand you all may want to come in for a mock interview. Well, Toya has availability on Friday at 2 30. And if you do not see someone that has availability, Yes, reach out to us, but just know that um, it could mean that we're all booked up for the week. Okay, and so just to kind of also let you all know, um, we do open our availability every Thursday of the week for the following week. So we'll be opening up availability tomorrow for next week. Okay. All right. So, so as it relates to Cougar Pathway, right, and how to use it. You can search for jobs and internships. Okay, you can upload your resume and your cover letter. Um, you can RSVP for career fairs, workshops, employee meet and greets, etc. You can even make an appointment with a career counselor, like I mentioned, um, to touch on whether it's career and major exploration, resume reviews, job internship, mock interviews. Okay. And so why is it important? So here's some three reasons, like I mentioned. So employers, because they're looking to hire you. Um, we host meet and greets. I know we had one yesterday. And so this is where you can go and get that firsthand information about ooh, who's coming. Right. Um, we have about 800 to 1000 jobs that are posted. OK, on campus and off campus jobs and internship opportunities. And then it's less competitive than Indeed or ZipRecruiter because it is optimized for us, for the UH community. OK, and it is customizable to you. And so it's customizable based on your major your interests and your classification. OK, so these are going to be some of those three reasons. Like I mentioned, we did demo it. And so now at this time, I'm going to stop sharing. OK, and so at this time, we have about maybe we have a couple of minutes. And so um, I think we're at a good spot um, to go ahead. If you have any questions, now will be the time for that. I did want to mention something. Um, yeah, go ahead. Dr. Hayes. So um, there are positions that are in Cougar Pathway, and because employers are the one that submit for the job postings, they do not always understand all of our majors. So if you see something in the system that doesn't make sense to you, you can let us know. Like, for example, um, they may select um, College of Engineering because they want a um, digital media major, but then you're in art, the College of Arts and they have graphic design. Well, you know you right. can do that job, but they just didn't post it right. They didn't click that button, the employer. Mm -hmm. If you let us know, we can contact that employer and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. Is this fine? We're gonna, And we can make the changes for you. Yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. And that's mm -hmm. honestly the truth. I just want y'all to understand that it's not us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop 